Good morning. Welcome to the worship of God at First Baptist Church on this Baptism of the Lord Sunday. Uh, that's why the communion table looks so good this morning. Uh, this is the Sunday of the year uh, that we remember Jesus' baptism, and by extension, we recall our own. We'll talk about that throughout the service, and uh, as the service ends today, we'll talk about that. I have uh, three announcements to make this morning. If you'll look at the back side of your order of worship, the first one is that uh, we've created a, a digital visitor card. Uh, you see the QR code down at the bottom. Uh, you can scan that with your phone. I tested it. It works. I was the first visitor to use it at First Baptist Church. Um, that's going to be on there every week going forward. Uh, in part because the last two visitor cards I've received have been illegible. And I, I hate not to be able to get in touch with folks that take the time to fill them out. This uh, will funnel it straight to the church office through the system, and uh, we'll get it that way. The second announcement I have is to note that the church office is closed tomorrow. Tomorrow is uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, it feels right um, that we take that day off uh, and respect and honor and remember uh, the Reverend Dr. King. So the church office is closed tomorrow, but will be reopened on Tuesday. The last announcement I just want to keep in front of you is down there at the bottom of Sunday, January the 29th. We're going to have a celebration of Beth's ministry here at First Baptist Church on that day, both in worship and with a luncheon afterward. You can sign up uh, for the luncheon on the doors of the uh, foyer here, if you go out and turn immediately around, or on the glass window of the office. There's two sign-up sheets out here. There may be one on the chapel door, too, but I'm not sure. Sharon doesn't know, uh, so out here. Sign up out here. Um, if you have any questions about the luncheon, after church, uh, direct those to Joel and Sharon Gooden, and they will help you along. Again, Baptism of the Lord Sunday. We're so glad you're here today for this special day that we remember the special event in our own lives. Welcome to worship. Our hymn of praise. Down by the Jordan is an insert in your bulletin. We'll sing the words telling the story that we are reading today in the Bible. Will you stand as we sing together?
July, will you take your bulletin as we do our liturgy of confession this morning? Let us be bold and confess our sins. God is gracious and always ready to forgive. God, you show no partiality, yet we are not always as tolerant and accepting. Forgive our intolerance. that we may be found acceptable in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And God's answer to us, God forgives all our sins and promises to bring us everlasting life. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.
Today's first lesson from the Bible comes from the book of Acts. Peter said, I really am learning that God doesn't show partiality to one group of people over another. Rather, in every nation, whoever worships him and does what is right is acceptable to him. This is the message of peace he sent to the Israelites by proclaiming the good news through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism John preached. You know about Jesus of Nazareth, whom God anointed with the Holy Spirit and endowed with power. Jesus traveled around, doing good and healing everyone oppressed by the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him up on the third day and allowed him to be seen, not by everyone, but by us. We are witnesses whom God chose beforehand, who ate and drank with him after God raised him from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Hello, friends. Come on up here. All right. Oh, we got ev- all right. We got everybody here. Okay. How are you? Hi, sweet girl. All right. Do you guys know what month it is? What's the name of the month we're in? Do you know? Friday. Friday. Close. January. We love Fridays in our house too, Micah. It's a good day. G- January, right? And we just celebrated a holiday in January. Anybody? That's in December. Yes, Christmas is great. What comes? And then in November, we have Thanksgiving. Yeah, we're we're going the wrong way in the calendar. Go the other way. In January, we celebrate. We say Happy New Year. New Year. Yes. And that means we start a brand new year, doesn't it? Yes, and in the new year, we get a chance to have a new beginning, don't we? Sometimes people set goals for themselves in the new year, like something they hope to do this year. What might one of your goals be in the new year? What do you hope to do this year? Anybody have any idea? What, Jack? Play on the swing set. That is a great goal. What, Micah? You want to play in the snow all day? Yes, we hope we have another good snow day. Good goal. What about you, Eleanor? Going on a big trip. Okay. What about you, Emma? Anything you want to do this year? Halloween. Halloween. You love Halloween. Have a good Halloween. Those are all good goals to have for this new year. And you like summer. I know. We go to the beach in the summer. Oh, boy, that sounds like a fun time. Well, we have at New Year's, we talk about new beginnings. And did you know that today we're... I would love to know where the big trip was. The beach. We all really want to go to the beach, just so everybody knows, okay? I know. Me too. Me too. So in the new year, we talk about new beginnings. And today, our Bible story talks about a new beginning for Jesus. Do you see the table right there with all the pretty things on it? Did you hear Pastor Zach say what day was today? Baptism of the Lord Sunday. 
I know. It's the day that we celebrate that Jesus was baptized. That's a big word. Do you know what baptized means? It means where somebody gets, well, in our tradition, dunked in the water, and they come up, and it symbolizes a new beginning, a new life in Christ. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, sinking and floating. We learn about that in science. That's right. So right up there behind the choir, that's where people in our church get baptized. We take away the pretty green plants, we fill it with water, and people get baptized. Our very own Courtney was one of the people that got baptized the last time we did that. And it symbolizes a new beginning. So today, our Bible story is about Jesus' baptism. And do you know what happened at Jesus' baptism? I'll tell you. God said, this is my son, and I love him very much. And so when we get baptized or when we remember our baptism, because some of us got baptized a long time ago, when we remember it, we remember that that happens for us too, that God looks at each one of you and me and everybody here and says, That is my child, and I love them very, very much. So when you think of baptism, when you hear the story of Jesus being baptized, you remember that God says that about you too, that we are God's children, and he loves us very much, okay? I did bring you a little sheet today that if you want to write down... (laughs) some of your goals, because you guys had lots of really good ones for this year, you can do that. I don't know how to write. I know. Somebody can help you. It's okay. That's a goal. We're working on it. Yeah, you can see the numbers. All right, let's say a quick prayer, and then you can go work on writing, coloring, drawing your goals, okay? Okay, we have extra pencils downstairs, don't worry. Okay, let's say a quick prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for baptism, and thank you that God looks at each one of us and says that we are his children, and he loves us so much. Help us to have a good rest of the day and a good week. In Jesus' name, amen. Good job, guys. You can go with your teachers downstairs. Thank you. There's an episode of the Andy Griffith Show where Barney gets really upset because he accuses Opie of writing something mean about him on a wall. And Andy keeps trying to tell him, I, Opie didn't do it. Opie didn't do it. And Barney just won't relent. And then Andy says, well, I know he didn't do it. Well, how? He ain't learned to write yet. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Let's pray. God, for the gift of the perspective of children in our midst, and they see the world so much larger, so much more full of wonder than we do. We give you thanks for that. Help us to see a little bit larger, a little bit more wonder in our world, for you made it. And it surely is a wondrous place. God, be with us as we come here to worship today. We bring our joys, our celebrations, and we want to celebrate them with you and with one another. We bring our griefs and our sorrows, our pain and our hardship, and we need your help holding those things, and we need one another's help holding those things. God, we offer all of it up to you today, the God of children's wondrous eyes and words. God, help us to worship well, to be in this space fully for the little bit of time that we get to be here, 
and then to go from here, full of your spirit for the world in which we live. God, this is our prayer, and as a means of living it out day to day, week to week, we practice another prayer, the one that you offer your disciples. We claim our place as your disciples, and we pray that prayer boldly together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our second lesson is from the Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River so that John would baptize him. John tried to stop him and said, I need to be baptized by you, yet you come to me? Jesus answered, allow me to be baptized now. This is necessary to fulfill all righteousness. So John agreed to baptize Jesus. When Jesus was baptized, he immediately came out of the water. Heaven was open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and resting on him. A voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I dearly love. I find happiness in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our hymn of stewardship is a reminder that we are God's beloved. Number 603, Jesus Loves Me. Will you stand?
Henry Nowen once wrote, quote, Personally, as my struggle reveals, I don't often feel like a beloved child of God. But I know that that is my most primal identity, and I know that I must choose it above and beyond my hesitation. I'm going to read that again to make sure that we all heard it, including the preacher, because it speaks to me. Personally, as my struggle reveals, I don't often feel like a beloved child of God, but I know that that is my most primal identity, and I know that I must choose it above and beyond my hesitations. This is such a helpful word from one of the giants of the 20th century church. 
Perhaps that's why it's such a helpful word to me. The fact that it came from such a prolific spiritual writer whose every book was just as good as the one before it. I don't often feel like a beloved child of God, but I know that that is my most primal identity now and said over and over again in his writings. And you know what? That's me. I get that. I really do. Do you? Does that resonate with you as well in the day-to-day grind of life with work and school and retirement and volunteering and family and church and, and, and? Do you ever feel unworthy? Do you ever feel hopelessly flawed? Do you ever feel judged? Now and did. I love his writings, all of them, because often I do too. Pope Francis in 2016 published a book. Jack Pennington and I have talked a little bit about that book. Jack said to me after reading it, quote, the Pope gets it. He gets the gospel. Sounds like something Jack would say, right? Yeah. The title of the little book published in 2016, which is actually a very lively manuscript, transcript of a conversation between the Pope and an Italian reporter, journalist really, the title says it all. The name of God is Mercy. That's a good title. Francis says, the word mercy derives from a Latin word which means opening one's heart to wretchedness. And immediately we go to the Lord. Mercy is the divine attitude which embraces, and it is God's giving of God's self to us, accepting us. Bowing to forgive us. Accepting us. Bowing to forgive us. The image in that line, well, there's only one word for it. Mercy. There are far, far too many churches in the world that preach something else. And to preach something else is to preach something other than the gospel of Jesus Christ. Pope Francis says so. Henry Nouwen says so. Jack Pennington says so. I say so. There are far too many churches preaching something other than mercy, something other than a God who accepts us and bows to forgive us. They are not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Why did Beth and John Parker, Zach and Christy Bay, choose to come and serve God as clergy here at this church and stick around for 10, 20 years? Why? Because for a long, long time, this church has preached the gospel. It's the only reason we're really here. We wouldn't be otherwise. For a long, long time, this church has preached the gospel. And I'm only partially talking about this moment in the life of the church right now from behind this big pulpit with all the lights on on Sunday morning. I'm only partially talking about this moment The gospel has been preached in this church in so many ways. The gospel has been preached by the notes and lyrics of good music. The gospel has been preached by the reverence with which this church gathers 
on Sunday mornings, apart from the sermon. The gospel has been preached by this church through its deep and generous support of all kinds of things in this community, and especially the cooperative Christian ministry. You see, through CCM, this church has preached the gospel by helping to keep the lights and heat on in people's houses in this town. Through CCM, this church has preached the gospel by offering grocery bags of food to hungry children and families in this town. This church has preached the gospel with CCM by offering a nice shirt, a good pair of pants to somebody that needed them, a warm coat, introducing people to people who might give them a job. That happens. That happens here. It happens at CCM. This church has preached the gospel through CCM and even here. I've seen you do it in the parking lot by offering a listening ear to somebody having a really hard time in life. This church has preached the gospel through CCM when CCM offers a ride to drug rehab to somebody from our community. It happens. It does. This church has preached the gospel for 133 and a half years now. And one of the ways that I see you doing it is all that stuff and so much more. Yeah. In all those ways, First Baptist Church preaches mercy, preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ. To say that FBC supports CCM, nah, that's not enough. It just does not capture the relationship. FBC is CCM. It is part, an extension. It is an arm of who we are. Yes, that's the way to say it. We are CCM. It's because for a long, long time now, First Baptist Church has preached the gospel in this place. For a long, long time now, First Baptist Church has looked past society's labeling of people. Poor, homeless, unemployed, lazy, freeloader, sinner, whatever else, looked past society's labeling of people and saw what all those words miss, human, human, human. I was speaking with the staff of CCM just this week and was told a story. You see, there's a young man who has been volunteering at CCM, and he was there meeting with a client one day, recently. They were discussing different kinds of aid that CCM offers and settling on what this particular client needed in this moment for some relief, some dignity. And in alongside the client's grief and shame for even being there, in the first place, the help of CCM sowed dignity and gratitude. Yeah. Out of that gratitude, the client asked the young man, will you please pray with me? A dart shot through the young man's gut as he told another CCM worker, I've never prayed before, never. The other worker said, you can do it. I'm not going to do it. He asked you. True. And the young man meeting with the client did offer a prayer. Who knows if it was well-polished who knows if it hit all the theological high points or not? Who cares? 
the young volunteer prayed his first prayer because he was there serving at CCM. You make that possible. You help that client get good food and warm clothing that he desperately needs. You help that young volunteer pray a prayer of mercy that he desperately needs. You make that possible, and you make it possible every single day. CCM goes on and on every day. It is one of the busiest places in this town. Just go by sometime during business hours, and you'll see what I mean. You make that possible. Stories like that are available every week. All you got to do is go down there and ask. They've got them in abundance. And really, there's only one word that fits that. Mercy. Today is Baptism of the Lord Sunday, as Christy tried to explain to the little ones. The gospel lesson is Matthew's telling of the story. The purpose of worship today is to help us to remember Jesus' baptism and relive our own. The purpose of worship today is is to glimpse, to catch a glimpse of God giving God's self to us, accepting us, and bowing to forgive us. That's precisely what God is up to in this story. You see, God is both in the heavens and in the waters of the earth in this story. Yeah, God is both places enacting a divine drama for all those around watching. How do we know that it's for all those around watching? Well, in Matthew's gospel, God says, this is my son. This is my son, the beloved, in whom I am well pleased. Now, if God had said, you are my son, the beloved, in whom I am well pleased. That'd be a different story. Maybe the crowd heard it. Maybe the crowd didn't. It happens that way in another gospel. But in Matthew's gospel, it is an announcement. This is my son, the beloved, in whom I am well pleased. Everyone around hears it. Everyone sees God in this moment, accepting, bowing to forgive them all. Henry Nouwen was once asked to distill the gospel down to one line. You know, that's hard. <laughs> that's hard. To distill anything down to one line is hard. But Nouwen said, you are the Beloved, period. That's it. That is the gospel. Now and went on to talk about how he wished he could tell everybody he met that and convey to them what it means to be the beloved of a loving God. You are the beloved, now and answered. In another place, Nowen wrote a little bit more. Not in that interview, not in that question, but a little bit more in another place. He wrote, strong emotions, self-rejection, and even self-hatred justifiably toss you about. But you are free to respond as you will. You are not what others or even you think about yourself. You are not what you do. You are not what you have. You are a full member of the human family. You have been known even before you were conceived and molded in your mother's womb. 
in times when you feel bad about yourself, try to choose to remain true to the truth of who you really are. Look in the mirror each day and claim your true identity. Act ahead of your feelings and trust that one day your feelings will catch up. Choose not and continue to choose this incredible truth. As a spiritual practice, claim and reclaim your primary identity as a beloved child of God. That's the gospel. It is good news. It wells up gratitude within people, and gratitude just runs over. You can't help but tell somebody when you experience that. So, beloved, beloved, this is what baptism of the Lord Sunday is for. It is a reminder of who you are in spite of all the messages that you get sent. You are the beloved. Ever since the day the water of baptism kissed your skin, you have been the beloved. And even before that. The single best way that I know of to remind yourself of this more than one Sunday in January each year is to go out in the world and tell other people, you are the beloved. Give them bread. Pray with them if they ask for it. Tell them, you are the beloved of God. Don't listen to that. Or that you are the beloved, no matter what. Accept it for yourself. Share it with others. And watch God grow it in both. Yeah, that's the best way I know to grow it in you and in the world. Sum it up. Once more, what's this day commemorating Jesus' baptism and our baptism about? Well, it's a reminder that you are welcome. You are included. You are the beloved of God. And all God's beloved people said, him for each of us to remember our baptism. Number 449, baptized in water. Please stand. i
in the foyer, right out there, there is on a stand a bowl of water. It's got blue pebbles in the bottom of it. Those are baptismal waters. Those are for you as you go from this place to dip your fingers in, to feel the water of baptism kiss your skin again, to remember what all baptism means in your life. And above all, it means you are the beloved. So as you go and as you pass by the bowl, Dip your fingers in there and feel the grace of God. May the strength of Christ uplift you, the comfort of the Holy Spirit surround you, and the grace and mercy of God give you hope and give you courage every day of your life as you go in peace. Amen. Amen.